Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for part four. Yes, I decided to do four parts because I had enough questions less because those uh, first three parts, I only covered nine questions. They ended up being so long of answers, I decided to do a part four. So let me get my hat on and uh, let's knock this out. All right, first question. What do you think about scaling back the weight significantly after someone hits plateaus on all lifts and instead focusing significantly on perfect form, range of motion, and controlled eccentrics, uh, not deliberately slow, T under T as a way to break through plateaus and reinvigorate hypertrophy. Uh, weights would still be challenging, but much lower than previous working weights. Uh, the thing I don't necessarily like in there is the, the control eccentrics. And the reason I say that, there are a lot of lifts in which you're going to make better progress and gains without controlled eccentrics. Uh, I don't think that's that important of a component. Uh, if it's an eccentric based lift, okay, I get it. If you're doing lifts that uh, really focus on the eccentric, like a Romanian deadlift, I get that. That's fine. Uh, but the squat, the deadlift, I mean, a lot of your big lifts, they you probably won't recover as well from doing controlled eccentrics. You can do more workload and everything else uh, and build more strength and power uh, without focusing much on the eccentric. So that, that one's kind of a no, I'm going to say not. Uh, as far as strict form, all right, getting your form and technique down, maybe doing pause work, full range of motion. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Uh, you know what? I would say things like even adding range of motion. If you've been doing wide grip bench press and you've stalled, um, maybe focus on doing a closer grip bench press that adds range of motion, pausing on the chest on every rep. All right, build more power through a longer range of motion, build more strength, develop and power in the weakest part of the lift off the chest. All right, doing pause close grip bench press is gonna carry over a lot to your chest development. Uh, full range of motion strength overall strength. Uh, it will help build up the weak links on your wider grip bench press. You could do that. Uh, again, like you said, range of motion. Maybe do a little bit of deficit deadlifting, even a one inch deficit. Put some work boots on. Stand on a plate. Uh, a little bit, add a little range of motion. Uh, cut the weights back a little, add some range of motion. Again, more pause work. Same thing on squats. Maybe focus on some pause squats. Focus on some pause overhead presses off the chest. Yeah, bring the weights down. Focus on technique, speed, strength, development. Because if you're cutting the weights too much and just focusing just on form and your form was already good, um, you're not going to see much improvement. All that's going to do is give you some recovery time. Maybe you push too hard and that's what caused you to plateau and stall. But if you come in and you add something that adds a new element to it, a new performance element, such as some pause work, all right, uh, longer range of motion work. Like you said, range of motion. We'll see if you can add an inch of range of motion on some of these lifts. Uh, even doing pause squats in the bottom can add an inch of range of motion sometimes. So yeah, focus on those things. That's probably uh, beneficial to what you're trying to do. Uh, so I would give that a go. That's reasonable. But the eccentric stuff, no. I, I don't think that matters at all. That's way overhyped. All right, uh, next question. I can squat 365 and deadlift 455 beltless and want to do a powerlifting meet this year. I'd like to start using a belt to increase my lifts. Any advice on incorporating into training and how to use uh, during training? All right, real simple, brother. Um, just put a belt on. If you're going to do a powerlifting meet, what I would say, uh, start focusing on doing uh, your work belted, like as you come up to the meet. You don't have to train with a belt year-round to learn to utilize a belt in a meet. I would say a good point to throw on a belt is going to be about 12 weeks before the meet. All right. Now, I don't know what sort of training you're doing. That's probably your training maxes. Um, so once you start peaking, uh, this is going to go a lot easier. What I would recommend, you know what, you, you already got your beltless maxes. You've built your core up. You've already got your base built, it sounds like. I mean, a 365, if you're deep ass to grass, beltless squat's pretty good. All right, if you're pulling 455 without a belt and it's a clean rep, go ahead and belt up and slip into like some Bulgarian lifestyle training. Uh, start 12 weeks out from a meet, go ahead and slip into some Bulgarian light and get used to the belt. Um, I would start with the same weights you're using without the belt because you have to learn to use the belt, breathe, and press your abs against the belt. That's going to give you a little more stability, a little more uprightness. All right, so slip into some... Uh, working training maxes every day. Do a Bulgarian light system. There's plenty of it out there. You can look up everyone from John Bros to Matt Perryman uh, to Greg Knuckles has various uh, models working for this. Slip into some Bulgarian light training. Put your belt on 12 weeks out and start practicing training maxes and singles uh, using the belt. 
All right, uh, and I would tell a lot of people, I think it's really silly when people start using the belt for high rep sets and everything for their hypertrophy and build up because that's not teaching them the technique to use the belt on a max. The purpose of using the belt is to increase the weight you use on a max. All right, is to build intra-abdominal pressure to keep your core more upright and give you better neuromuscular efficiency when you train on a max. So using belts for all this rep work, um, people are going to argue with me. They're going to think I'm wrong. I don't see the point. I don't, I don't see what people are trying to get out of it. Uh, do your rep work beltless. But when you're going to compete with a belt, yeah, start 12 weeks out. Start hitting training maxes. Do a Bulgarian type system and get used to using that belt for singles using that belt for tons of singles uh, over the week because that's what's going to matter. That's how you're using the belt in a meet. Uh, that's what it's for. Uh, so start that 12 weeks out and see where it takes you. And I wouldn't be surprised if you're 365 beltless, unpeaked. Um, I would say hitting a 430 plus squat with a belt in, in competition, if you're 12 weeks out now, I don't think it's unreasonable. Uh, if you're not peaked and you can deadlift 455 beltless, getting up to a 500 plus deadlift, I think it's going to be totally reasonable for you. Uh, so go ahead and give it a whirl. All right, next question. Jason, what upper body lifts do you suggest for someone who is recovering from golfer's elbow but still wants to make progress? Um, cut out all your isolation work. Golfer's elbow is like tennis elbow, but it's for the forearms down here. Uh, and incidentally, uh, it's usually caused by people who lift weights, it's curling that causes it, curling incorrectly. Uh, people who don't understand what I mean by curling incorrectly, when you curl, this is not a curl. All right? Your hand should never, ever break past your wrist line, meaning it should never be more than 90 degrees from your forearm. If your hand and your wrist ever turns up at all on a curl, you're going to be the motherfucker who gets golfer's uh, elbow. All right, you're the person who gets it. That causes it. Uh, so people who haven't been trailing behind on their curls like this with their wrist behind them, that's the people who are most likely to get it from the lifting. Now, it could be caused from other things you're doing. Um, I'm going to say cut all your isolation work out, though, because curls done incorrectly are causing it. You're very possibly, I'm not saying in your case there could be other things that cause it, but if you lift weights and you're developing it, 9 out of 10 times, that's what's going on. Or doing your chin-ups incorrectly doing your chin-ups incorrectly um, which again is if you're curling under like this so you can try to get all the way up there to the top sometimes sometimes people who try to get way over the top of the bar occasionally they have too much wrist bend depends on the person uh, that could be contributing so I'm gonna say cut out all your isolation work for your arms go to big heavy compounds uh, and as much as I love chin-ups, you might want to consider cutting chin-ups out until your golfer's elbow completely recovers. But curls are going to be out completely. Definitely cut out the curls. Um, maybe chin-ups and any tricep isolation too. Just cut the isolation work out until your golfer's elbow uh, heals. All right, uh, next question and last question of the week. Jason, will you ever make a Q&A for your political and firearms channel? Um, it doesn't have a big enough following, honestly, to do that. I'm not going to get into all my numbers there, but I did try to do it on the Facebook fan page the same way I do this one, and I just didn't get, I only got like two questions, and they weren't even like actually good questions for the channel. Um, because the Facebook fan page for my firearm channel isn't big, it doesn't have tens of thousands of followers like the uh, fitness channel page does, uh, it's kind of hard to set up a Q&A thread to get questions. It's just, at this point, it's impossible. Will I do it later? Uh, if I get, you know, 5,000 followers on that Facebook fan page to where there'll be 5,000 people who might be able to ask questions, very possibly, but until uh, it gets a big enough following, I won't be able to get enough questions. So I just kind of do that one based on whatever topics uh, as it comes along. So I don't do a Q&A like I do on this one. Uh, but in time, maybe I will, very possibly. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.